Hello everybody and welcome into episode number 230 of the Bible 2021 podcast. We are reading Psalm 37 today and our focus is on a word for the Taliban, what's happening in Afghanistan and the fruitlessness of worry and fretting. So every day we go through the Word of God seeking to listen, obey, understand, and follow it. And our goal is to encourage you in daily Bible reading, daily Bible listening, and daily Bible following. And I do want to point you to our website, Bible2021.com. That's Bible2021.com. That's the best way to subscribe to the show and also to get a transcript of every episode. Today we're in the Psalms again, and I will repeat what I've been saying for the past months, only Recently in my life, uh, 20-something years as a pastor, really since the pandemic broke out, I think have the psalm become, become more and more of a delight to me. I generally start every day now reading a psalm or two, and this is because I got in a bad habit in 2020 of starting my day every day at the beginning of reading the number of new COVID cases in my county, which honestly ended up being bad for my soul. I still read the number of new COVID cases in my county and in state and country pretty much every day, ugh, but my day begins with the Psalms, and I find that is so much better for my walk with God than any other way of beginning the day. And as I type this, the big news worldwide is not actually today and yesterday the fourth or fifth massive COVID wave, though. It is the sad fact that the Taliban has swept through Afghanistan and taken over the capital of Kabul. I've never been to Afghanistan, so I don't have first-hand experience, but I'm hearing from various mission agencies and missionaries and many others that many Christian Afghans are in great peril, along with really many Afghani citizens and uh, especially ladies in Afghanistan with the Taliban taking over. And Psalm 37, 14, and 15 seems to have a word for those conquering Taliban, should they continue to slaughter people, mistreat women, and brutalize. And verses 14 and 15 and 20 say, The wicked have drawn the sword and strung the bow to bring down the poor and needy and to slaughter those whose way is upright. Their swords will enter their own hearts and their bows will be broken, but the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies, like the glory of the pastures, will fade away. They will fade away like smoke. That will be the end of all who brutalize the in innocent, bring down the poor and needy, and murder those who are upright. They may appear to triumph for a moment, a month, or even a time, but their end, says the word of God, will be destruction and their punishment will be eternal. Their tiny temporal victory will be swallowed up in eons upon eons of justice and suffering. Well, about a month ago, I was reading through Psalm 37 in the morning and was utterly struck by a very simple truth in verse 8. It says, Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Fret not yourself. Now, fret is a funny word. It is such good counsel, but so difficult to follow. I recognize that I have more of a tendency to fret myself in my late 40s than I did in my early 40s or 30s or 20s or teens. Maybe it's just a temporary stage in life or uh, what? I don't know. But I want to remember this truth. So I wrote down this psalm on our dry erase board on our fridge, so I can see it pretty much every day. Three times in this passage, we're told not to fret ourselves. And if you're like me, and the word fret, F-R-E-T, sounds like some sort of holdover from the 1700s, it's probably good to review a definition. So fret means, number one, to be constantly or visibly worried or anxious, and number two, to gradually wear away by rubbing or gnawing. So our key verse today tells us not to constantly worry ourselves or be anxious and not to wear ourselves away by rubbing and gnawing. And that seems like really good advice, although obviously definition number two is obviously a bit metaphorical in this case. Well, here are the three times we're told not to fret in Psalm 37. Verse one, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like grass. Verse two, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Psalm 37, verse 8 and 9. 
Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil, for the evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. So those are good commands to meditate on, and notice how they're surrounded by promises that should counteract our fretting. The command is not simply to stop doing something negative, but to stop doing something negative like fretting because of a wonderful and promised truth, such as the fact that evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait on God will inherit the land. So pondering those promises in our hearts wages war against worry, anxiety, and fretting. Here's some wise counsel from Charles Spurgeon on how to trust Christ in a greater way and not fret yourself. He says, I think this is the principal thing that you and I have to do. When we think about our Lord Jesus Christ, we need not worry ourselves about he will affect his purposes, how the decrees of God will be carried out, or how his promises will be fulfilled. The principal thing we have to do is this, to be ourselves the Lord's servants, and when he says to any one of us, go, to mind that we go. And when he says come, to see that we do come. And when he says do this, to be sure we do it. Thou would, if you would rule the seas, you'd better rule yourself first. You who would purge the church and clean it up, you better see to it that your own heart is purged. You who would reform the world, out with you. What have you to do with reforming the world until you first washed your own hands in innocency? Get yourself to the right place and do your own work and it will be well with you. Who are you, after all, but a tiny worker on a little anthill? You have one grain of wheat to carry, and that's enough for you. But don't worry yourself about all the other concerns of the anthill. If you do, at least don't fret yourself about the whole planet on which you live, still less about the complete solar system, for what can you do with it if you do worry? Even unto death, nothing but do thy little share of work upon your own ant hill, carry your own grain of wheat to the general store, so that you will have answered the purpose of your being, and it will be well with you. May God, even our Lord Jesus Christ, give us the grace to set him up very high as Lord and Master, full of power, wisdom, and love, and then to set ourselves down very low, and to ask that as his servants we may serve him faithfully all the days of our life. Now that said, Let me say that it is good to carry the burden for our Afghan brothers and sisters, to pray and to help where possible. I'm not saying we should not be burdened or concerned for the evils in the world, and neither is Spurgeon, certainly. Be concerned, be burdened, pray, help, but don't fret yourself. Don't fret yourself over anything. Don't work yourself into a state of anxiety over things, says the Word of God. Christ the King comes soon to settle the scores, punish the evil, and the meek will inherit the earth, not the blood for thirsty, not the vile, not the abusive. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight at the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more when he bears his teeth, winter meets its death, and when he shakes his mane, we will have spring again. That's of course from the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Let's read our passage, Psalm Chapter 37, verse 1, Fret not yourself because of evildoers, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil, for the evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace." The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and needy to slay those whose way is upright. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous." The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. 
but the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. The wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. For those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. Turn away from evil and do good, so shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children and the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom and his tongue speaks justice. The law of God, if his God is in his heart, his steps do not slip. The wicked watches for the righteous and seeks to put him to death. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he is brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. I've seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree, but he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Though I sought him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace, but transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Amen. So many great promises in one small psalm. Hallelujah. Well, let's close out with our Bible verses for the month of August. We are memorizing these verses as we read them every day. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 6, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. Good day to you, friends, and Godspeed.